The Sims 2 vs The Sims 4. The Sims 2 was released 10 years before The Sims 4, which is means The Sims 4 has had 10 more years of technology, 10 more years of advancement to get it right. Yet many Simmers, including myself, often feel like The Sims 2 is basically a better game, not in terms of AI, but also things like graphics, which is pretty shocking, actually. So I thought it'd be fun to look at all of the packs and actually see, is The Sims 2 really better? So I'm gonna go over all of The Sims 4 packs in release order, starting with University. Yes, by the way, all of these trailers are in tremendously low quality because the game is 10 years old. <laughs> so the interesting thing about The Sims 2 University, first it came with drums. We do not have drums in The Sims 4, yet in The Sims 2 University they did come with that, which is pretty cool, and you can have like a band in University, which I like. It also came with MP3 players. I'm just going over all of the things that it came with that The Sims 4 did not. So it came with MP3 players, which I believe you get in the fitness stuff pack for The Sims 4. It came with three brand new worlds. That's right, the university pack came with three worlds. As far as I'm aware, each one had a different university, which means we basically got three universities. The pack concept is very similar to The Sims 4 Discover University. I will say the actual university of The Sims 4 is much better in terms of gameplay mechanics. But one thing I will say is that The Sims 2 thrived on the non-education bit of university. And it came with some very cool miscellaneous things as well. I think it's important to note, like, although The Sims 2 University doesn't have a campus like in The Sims 4, all of the experiences of learning are rabbit hole experiences in both games. So they're not really that different. And when we look at The Sims 2, it still comes with secret societies like we did in The Sims 4. It even comes with Greek houses. I think The Sims 2 University is like American themed and The Sims 4 one is British themed while I don't think we have that Greek house feature, but it is an extra feature that we didn't have in The Sims 4. It also came with zombies, something that we do not have in The Sims 4 yet. And that is because The Sims 2 Discover University also came with the Paranormal Career, which is a part of the Paranormal Stuff Pack. Another iconic Sims 2 thing, I think, in fact, my favourite Sims 2 object is the plastic surgery table. I really miss plastic surgery in The Sims. I can't believe we don't have it in The Sims 4 yet, like it's literally insane. It should have come in the Spa Day refresh, I feel, but it didn't. But anyway, the Sims 2 University pack did come with a plastic surgery station where you could give people basically terrible plastic surgery. Because in The Sims 4 right now, without cheats, there's not really a way to like change your physical appearance. But I liked in The Sims 2 that you could do that with a plastic surgery station. So I think when it comes to university, although The Sims 4 is obviously better because it has better graphics, it has better hardware, blah, 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 capabilities, but that's only because it was released 10 years later. If we exclude the time related factors and just focus solely on gameplay. The Sims 2 literally has more gameplay on the university level. So that is a win for The Sims 2. So the next release pack is The Sims 2 Nightlife. This is honestly one of the hugest Sims 2 packs ever. In fact, it is one of my favourite Sims 2 packs. So firstly, this pack comes with vampires, something that comes separately in a vampires pack in The Sims 4. Now I will say the vampires in The Sims 2 are not as advanced as vampires in The Sims 4. And in a way, I do actually prefer The Sims 4 way of having it as a separate pack because when I was younger, I didn't get The Sims 2 Nightlife because I wanted to Nightlife. I wanted The Sims 2 Nightlife because it came with vampires. That was the exact same thing with The Sims 3 Late Night. I only really got it just because I wanted vampires. So from that perspective, I actually really like that The Sims 4 does have a better experience in terms of quality of quantity impacts. Not to say that The Sims 2 Nightlife was bad, but I just think the vampire did not really go far enough. Another thing The Sims 2 Nightlife introduces cars, which is the first iteration of proper vehicles that you could actually drive and use in The Sims. In terms of The Sims 4, there is an obvious downgrade there. <laughs> Another thing this pack came with is a matchmaker. In The Sims 4 yet, we don't actually have online dating. Obviously The Sims 2 was released at a time when like the internet and technology wasn't really that big and online dating wasn't really a thing. So we had a like physical matchmaker who would come to your house and find a date for you. But that's something that we don't have have in The Sims 4, especially the Get Together pack, which is basically the same thing as The Sims 2 Nightlife. It doesn't have some kind of thing about getting together on a date. This pack also came with a bowling alley. So in The Sims 4, we have bowling as a stuff pack, but in The Sims 2, it just came bundled in with Nightlife as one big thing. We also had restaurants in The Sims 2 Nightlife. So that's The Sims 4 Dine Out popped into that mix as well. This pack also came with a DJ booth, dance floor, disco lights, etc 
Electra, which again is something from Get Together in The Sims 4. It also comes with a karaoke machine, which is something from the City Living pack. And in some ways, The Sims 2 nightlife is very similar to City Living and that it's all about the nightlife and going out. It also comes with a photo booth, which I believe is something that comes with high school years. It comes with a poker table, which does not exist in The Sims 4 because The Sims 4 is too family friendly for that, even though it's player based and mostly over 18. Another thing we can do is form outings in this pack, just like Get Together. And another thing they have with this pack is something called a Fury system, which I actually think is really interesting. So The Sims 2 Nightlife introduces this concept of Fury, which basically affects the way your social interactions are. If, for example, your spouse is caught cheating with another Sim, or your Sim has a drink thrown in their face, or they get into a fight or something, that Sim will become furious with them. So if you're cheated on, your Sim who you cheated on against will be furious with you. If you get stood up on a date, the person who stood you up, you'll get furious with them. And when that Sim is furious with you, they will actually do things against you. So if your Sim is furious with you for cheating on you, they might kick over your trash can or they might steal your newspaper. This is really interesting because in The Sims 4, when you basically get furious, you don't really get furious at a specific Sim. You're just like generically angry. Whereas in The Sims 2, the nightlife, it introduces a concept of aiming that anger towards somebody else and having very specific consequences for that, which is something, some level of detail we do not have in The Sims 4. So which is better, The Sims 2 nightlife or The Sims 4 get together forward slash bowling nights forward slash dine out forward slash vampires forward slash cars which we don't have yet forward slash city living i would say the sims 2 nightlife was a lot more advanced the next release sims 2 pack which is my favorite sims 2 pack which is open for business i love open for business i think it's an incredible pack i think it's so much fun i love retail it's like my favorite thing in the sims so this is my forte so the sims 2 open for business is basically just the sims 4 get to work but only the retail system in that sense it already feels like more of a win for The Sims 4 because The Sims 4 Get to Work comes with three active careers and we got retail. Although at face value it seems like The Sims 4 is a win, it's not necessarily the case. Firstly, I think we should look at the world for Open for Business. The Sims 4 Get to Work has a tiny world with four lots. Open for Business in The Sims 2 has a much bigger world. There are also some things as well that this pack comes with which The Sims 4 does not have, for example supermarket shopping. The Sims 4 Cottage Living has this market store system where you go into a market which is kind of similar and with the pack you can do an online food shop order but we don't actually have supermarkets that you can go into and with this pack you do actually have supermarkets. Another thing that came with The Sims 2 not specifically with the open for business pack but in general we actually got going to shops and buying clothes which is something that we can't have in The Sims 4 and even though you do technically have it with The Sims 4 retail system in Get to Work you don't need to buy clothes because all outfits are just available for free from your wardrobe so that's one thing that annoys me about The Sims 4 it's too easy. One of the best things about retail though in The Sims 2 Get to Work for me, in The Sims 4 when your Sims buy stuff from a retail store there's no real like animations for it they just kind of walk up to the item swipe it and it magically appears in their inventory. Same from the perspective of selling things The Sims don't like grab the item go up to the till and buy it like you just kind of your Sim just holds an iPad and then the other Sim will again just randomly buy it and it will magically appear in their inventory there's no like animations. In The Sims 2 by the way. When they buy things, they will actually look at the item, they will then pick it up, they will then put it in a basket, go to the cashier, take it home in a bag, like they're actually like use the till system properly. And in The Sims 4 Get to Work, you need a cash register, but it never gets used. It's a very strange thing in The Sims 4 retail system, where it was very lazily put together in my opinion, whereas in The Sims 2, they took a lot of time on the animations. Not just that, there was also a mystery shopper system in The Sims 2 Open for Business, which I don't believe exists in The Sims 4 Get to Work. This pack also came with a cosmetology career, something that I believe we do not have in The Sims 4. It also came with toy making, which was a really fun part of The Sims 2 Get to Work. We don't have toy making in The Sims 4 really, and I feel like it could have gone so well in Get to Work because it's nice the idea of making your own like toy store, but unfortunately you can't do it. In that perspective, The Sims 2 open for business, like businessy features, I will say are better in general because we still have all the same stuff like we have business perks like in The Sims 4 too like everything is the same but I do acknowledge that The Sims 4 Get to Work has some active careers which The Sims 2 Open Business does not so I feel like they're balanced out so for this one I 
will say it's like a win for both. They both get a point. The next one is The Sims 2 Pets. So in The Sims 4, we don't actually have a pets pack. We have a cats and dogs pack. Already, I think we can categorically say The Sims 2 has more because we have more animals. We have birds and we have guinea pigs. In The Sims 4, I believe we don't have birds, but we do have guinea pigs, well, kind of guinea pigs in The Sims 4 My First Pet stuff, which is DLC for the DLC cats and dogs. So you need cats and dogs first and then you, well, you need The Sims 4 base game first and then you need to buy cats and dogs and then you can buy My First Pet stuff just so you can have guinea pig cages in your game. In The Sims 2, they said no to the capitalism and they just included it in the pets pack, which is what they should have done in Sims 4, so that's automatically basically a point going to The Sims 2. Another thing in The Sims 2 Pets Pack, we got werewolves. Now, werewolves in The Sims 2 and The Sims 4 actually function very similarly, but obviously The Sims 2 is not as advanced. The Sims 4, we have our own special werewolves pack, which comes with a whole new world, comes with pack hierarchy system, comes with a skill tree system, comes with a really cool cast system. Like, there is so much of The Sims 4 werewolves, and in that sense, The Sims 4 werewolves are obviously significantly better. But as with The Sims 2 Nightlife, the whole point of the pack wasn't vampires, it was about nightlife. And the same with The Sims 2 Pets, the whole point wasn't about werewolves, the whole point was about pets. Another thing we have is NPCs, which is skunks in The Sims 2 Pets. You can actually have a skunk visit your property. One thing I really miss from the old Sims games is pet NPCs, so skunks or foxes or whatever. In The Sims 4 we don't really, well technically we have foxes in Cottage Living, but in The Sims 4 Pets pack, we actually actually have a badger which is not a badger it's just a cat with a badger skin and we have a fox which is just a dog which looks like a fox but it's just a dog because the sims team were too lazy forward slash didn't have enough resources or ambition or motivation to give us real npcs like skunks or foxes or whatever in the sims 4 so that is another point for the sims 2 pets so obviously in the sims 4 we did get the veterinary career which i admit is actually quite a fun career and i do think it's a really cool idea that we haven't had before although one thing i do very much appreciate appreciate about The Sims 2 pets is that we have pet jobs. So in The Sims 2, your pet could either be a movie star, a rescue pet, or a security pet. I think this was genius. I honestly can't believe that we don't have this in The Sims 4 because it would have made such a cool idea, especially if you could have a famous pet because pets could actually get famous after the high school years pet was released because there was a glitch, funnily enough, that allowed for pets to get famous. But I almost wish it wasn't a glitch and it could be real because in The Sims 2, your pets could literally be famous and they could work and I think it was such a quirky feature and I honestly was so disappointed when it didn't come back for The Sims 4 Cats and Dogs. So that is another win for The Sims 2 and although I think The Sims 2 veterinary career is great I wouldn't say it's really that different from for example the doctor career in Get to Work. I don't know how coding works was it just a bit of like a reuse coding from Get to Work I don't know but it doesn't feel like specific enough to me so from that perspective I will give the win to The Sims 2. The next this one is The Sims 2 Seasons. Firstly, The Sims 4 Seasons doesn't come with a world, whereas The Sims 2 Season does. So as well as affecting all of the other worlds, it also comes with a brand new world itself, which Sims 4 does not do. The packs are actually not really that dissimilar. As a very random note, The Sims 2 Seasons comes with a penguin NPC that randomly turns up, but I don't really know why. It's a little bit pointless if I'm being honest. One thing The Sims 2 Seasons does come with is bug catching and bug collections, which is sold separately in The Sims 4 as Outdoor Retreat. It also comes with some random details I found were not existing in The Sims 4. For example, in The Sims 2 seasons, there are more interactions with pets. For example, dogs can eat the snow. Something I'm not sure you can do in The Sims 4, I believe, as a pet, but forgive me if I'm wrong. Although obviously The Sims 2 seasons does come with a brand new world, I will say The Sims 4 is a lot better in that it comes with a holiday system where you can make up your own holidays, which I just think is so cool. It does come with a flower arranging thing that we don't have in The Sims 2. It comes with an enhanced gardening system which we don't really have in The Sims 2 and in general it does come with some more generic interactions and things you can do related to the season. So in that respect, I will give the win to The Sims 4 on this one. The next one is The Sims 2 Bon Voyage. Are you ready to be amazed? I do not think you are ready. So firstly, I think it's important to note that in The Sims 4, we don't really have like a very specific vacation pack. I mean, I guess we have jungle adventures and outdoor retreat, but they're not really, oh, and, and journey to Batu, all right? We don't have a pack that's like, I guess, dedicated to vacationing. So in The Sims 2 Bon Voyage, we actually have three holiday destination worlds, which is the Far East, the Tropical, and the Mountain Worlds. This whole
whole concept of having three vacation worlds is actually something that's existed in every Sims game apart from The Sims 4. So there is a lot to talk about with this one. This pack comes with vacation homes, campgrounds, and hotels. In The Sims 4, campgrounds come with outdoor retreat, I believe. Although even so, in the outdoor retreat world, the campground is not necessarily like a proper campground because every single lot basically is a private vacation dwelling. Therefore, there is no real proper like campground area really. It's just like some tents in the middle. So it doesn't really count. But in The Sims 2 Bon Voyage, we actually got a proper campground area that you can stay in. We also got vacation homes like we have in The Sims 4. And we have hotels of all things. That's right, something we don't have in The Sims 4. These came in all three of the worlds. So you can choose whichever one you wanted. Another thing this pack came with, again, is restaurants like in The Sims 2 Nightlife. So there's a bit of dine out in there. We also got things like tour guides, which I don't believe we have in The Sims 4. Another random thing we don't have in The Sims 4 is a hammock, but we do have that in The Sims 2 Bon Voyage. Obviously each world is different. So if we start with Takamizi Village, this one is basically like Japanese themed. There's different gestures like you can bow and things. They have hot springs, just like in The Sims 4 Snowy Escape. You can learn Tai Chi. You can serve tea. You can play Mahjong. You can rake in the Zen garden. It also comes with generic things like massaging and like acupuncture and things just like in The Sims 4 Spa Day, which is another pack rolled in there. In Tweaky Island, which is a more tropical themed place. It comes with Hawaiian themed food and it comes with hula dancing. It comes with hot stone massages. It comes with a witch doctor NPC. Then we got three lakes, which is kind of like The Sims 4 outdoor retreat. You can do things like throwing axes. You can do like fishing and things. You can play something called log rolling. The NPC here, by the way, is Bigfoot. So you can actually befriend Bigfoot. You can woohoo with Bigfoot if you really wanted to. Something that we don't have in The Sims 4. This pack can contain like bloody ninjas, pirates. Like I cannot tell you like how much stuff came in this pack. So compared to The Sims 4, you know, this is basically The Sims 4 outdoor retreat. It is The Sims 4 jungle adventures. It is The Sims 4 island paradise. It's The Sims 4 snowy escape. <laughs> Plus many more things. So I think this is an obvious win for The Sims 2. The next Sims 2 pack is The Sims 2 free time. I would admit this is a very random pack and it was considered the most capitalistic key boring pack of The Sims 2 back in the day I remember. And that's because nobody really understood what the pack was about. It basically features like group activities and hobbies for Sims. So what this pack did come with is parenting skills, which is something that comes with The Sims for parenthood. But in The Sims 2, it was in the free time pack. It also came with a nursery rhyme skill randomly. Don't know why that exists, but it's there. The Sims 2 free time also came with this concept of hobby enthusiasm, which is something that we don't really have in The Sims 4, which is basically where you can become enthusiastic about a certain kind of thing and enjoy a certain kind of hobby. This is actually something that I really like about this pack and I really wish we had it for The Sims 4, but we don't. The pack actually came with things like ballet, it came with basketball stitchings or sewing, it came with pottery, it came with model train sets, it came with hiking and jogging, it came with bird watching, it expands on the bug collecting skill, it comes with ant farms, it comes with a junk car where you can just like maintain and build the car. It came with a lot of hobby stuff and although I think it's really really cool, in The Sims 4 a lot of the hobbies basically come with different packs. So like we have basketball in The Sims 4 but it comes with city living, we have football which comes with Discover University, American football with high school years. We have sewing, which comes with cottage living. Although in The Sims 4, it's a bit more frustrating that they are spread out. I guess they make sense in terms of the packs that they're with. So in that sense, maybe The Sims 4 does get a win. Although I will say this is a controversial opinion, but I do think The Sims 4 parenthood is very capitalistic -y and it is very underwhelming. And I know that's controversial because a lot of people love The Sims 4 parenthood pack. But the parenting skill, in my opinion, in The Sims 4, fundamentally is not really that advanced. It is very simplistic. And although The Sims 2 version of parenting is also very simplistic, it's fine in that respect. So I will say the fact that in The Sims 2 parenting comes integrated in another pack, it does give it a win over The Sims 4. Another thing The Sims 2 free time came with is a genie. <laughs> Something that we do not have in The Sims 4 yet. Will we ever get it in The Sims 4? Probably not to be fair. It is something that I really miss. It's been in every Sims game. The Sims 4 occults, although they're the most in-depth, we barely have any occult, which is a shame. So this one is tricky because I feel like The Sims 2 free time is a fun pack and that it comes with a lot of hobbies and things to do. It has a very specific theme, it comes with genies that we don't have, it integrates parenting, but I do
do admit that the pack wasn't really necessary to exist and a lot of the features in this those pack although it comes with a lot of features all those features already exist in the sims 4 in a way that is integrated in other packs and doesn't really need to exist as its own standalone pack but it comes with bloody genies and hobby enthusiasm which is something we don't have in sims 4 and it's such a cool idea being able to actually have your own hobbies we have likes in the sims 4 but it's just not the same so this one for me is going to be a win for both the next one is sims 2 apartment life which i guess is kind of like the sims 4 city living so in the sims 4 city living the world san Maishino is split into three different districts like the arts district the fashion districts and like the luxury district whereas in the sims 2 it introduced like a social class system so we have basically like the slums area which is basically the poor people bit we also had the very modern district somewhere fancy where all the high class people live and then we basically had the more suburban area and that's because this pack came with a social class system which is incredibly cool and incredibly british just like in real life every single lot in the sims 2 apartment life whether it was residential or community lot came with a social class value which is basically low medium or high and as well as having low medium and high we also basically had like different types of people like a different subcategories like you know in real life we got like emos we got the chavs oh, well if you're not british you don't have chavs but do you know what i mean like we've got like different kinds of people in the world the sims 2 social class system was incredible because it determined who you are because in the sims 4 when you have story progression on people will be in the most random careers that don't correspond with how much money they earn or what they do or their social class you'll see five star celebrities like judith ward going in the trashiest dump places it doesn't make any sense the fact that in the sims 2 they've actually coded it so people will go with areas associated with their own class is incredible this is life simulation at its peak because it actually represents real life it actually gives you a much greater sense of immersion because your sims are much more likely to hang out with sims who are similar to them i just honestly can't believe how incredible this is in the sims 2 and we don't have it 10 years on in the sims 4 which is supposed to be better i honestly just can't believe it another thing the sims 2 apartment life came with is magic it came with this concept of like a good witch and a bad witch and it was very traditional in the sims 4 realm of magic it's i would say very modern whereas in the sims 2 it was very traditional like witches and wizards which i kind of liked although i will say the sims 4 spellcasters as with other occults are much more in depth and i do prefer that pack in general for spellcasters this pack did also come with butlers which in the sims 4 you have to pay for vintage glamour stuff for but in the sims 2 it just came with apartment life it also came with roommates which i believe is a lot behind discover university in the sims 4 it came with murphy beds which is a lot behind the sims 2 tiny living oh and it came with a reputation system which is a lot behind the sims 4 get famous it came with break dancing which i don't believe we have in the sims 4 it came with another skill called life skills which is again a genius thing we don't have in the sims 4 so life skills are just like generic skills so one of them is fire prevention sims who are high on life skills are more likely to be able to put out a fire easily instead of just standing around panicking and burning in the fire another great thing about life skills is anger management sims who are good at life skills are less likely to get furious and they're less likely to have damaged relationships as a result of getting angry because they can calm themselves down easier they're also weirdly able to gain fitness skill faster with better life skills and they can do an interaction called repair relationship with where they can basically counsel other couples now i will say the sims 2 life skill although it was a good idea on paper it's very random although i like the idea of like fire prevention but i don't feel like it's really a good thing just because it doesn't make much sense like it's so random and they didn't go far enough with it in that respect i don't really think it's that big of a deal but still it's a cool feature it also came with a playground set in the sims 4 if you want a playground set i believe you need toddler stuff otherwise we don't really have any stuff for kids in a playground it came with the walk-in closet which is a lot behind get together in the sims 4 it came with the iconic heart bed which we do not have in the sims 4 but exists in every single sims game apart from the sims 4 because sims 4 could never it also comes with a skipping rope or jump rope it comes with stargazing it comes with randomly it comes with the ability for toddlers to sleep on pet beds even though this is a pack that's got nothing to do with pets they updated the pets pack with this pack so toddlers could sleep on pet beds in apartments which i believe is something that you can't do in the sims for cats and dogs this pack also rather randomly comes with an interaction where your sims can cuddle before waking up sims in the sims 2 actually cuddle in bed whereas in the sims 4 they don't really and i really miss that another very random thing but lovely thing about this pack is that it comes with a silent mode for cell phones i hate how phones in the sims 4 are constantly ringing i love how in the sims 2 
issue with this pack, you can put your phone in silent mode so it will shut up and people will stop calling you for random things like they do in The Sims 4. So in terms of The Sims 2 apartment life, I will say it is significantly more advanced in almost all areas. So that is a win for The Sims 2. The Sims 2 didn't come with game packs, but it did come with stuff packs. Now I must say stuff packs in The Sims 4 were pretty crap. Like it just came with build by objects and create a sim objects. It came with significantly less, I believe, than what we did with The Sims 4. Also, it didn't really come with any new gameplay. Like some of them did a little bit, but not much. They were a lot more cash grabby, but I want to talk about some honorable mentions. First up, we got H&M fashion stuff. In The Sims 4, we got Moschino stuff. Nobody resonated with it because nobody is rich enough to afford Moschino stuff in real life. The fashion that did come with the Moschino pack was actually pretty bad as well. In The Sims 2, you could literally create like your own H&M fashion shop. Like you could literally create your own H&M store and like buy clothes from the store with the H&M fashion stuff pack, which I think is so cool that we don't have in The Sims 4. Also, we got the IKEA home pack, which I think is such a genius idea. I wish The Sims team tried to like make another version of this pack in The Sims 4. I know we got a mod for it, but I wish it was official because I think it's such a cool idea. But in general, The Sims 2 stuff packs weren't really like great. Some of them came with things that we don't have in The Sims 4, like the mansion and garden stuff pack. Came with solar panels, which you need eco lifestyle for, and it came with a sweeping staircase, which we don't have in The Sims 4 yet. We also had, for example, the kitchen and bathroom stuff pack, which came with stuff for your kitchen and your bathroom. But The Sims 4, we only got cool kitchen stuff, which is only stuff for your kitchen. But in general, guys, I will say, although The Sims 4 stuff packs are very spread out, they do come with a lot more stuff. So in that respect, I do say wins for The Sims 4 stuff packs. So if my calculations are correct, The Sims 2 has a win of seven points and The Sims 4 has a win of four points. That means the pack system of The Sims 2 is better than The Sims 4. That is a scientific fact. Not really, it's just my opinion. What do you think about my opinion? I'm genuinely curious. If you would like to see me compare The Sims 3 versus The Sims 4, I have a whole video of that here, so make sure you check that out. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.